12 away from 8 o'clock if you're keeping an eye on the time. Now, there are fears, this is a very serious story, that China's ban on South Africa's wool and wool products will have a devastating effect on the local industry. Let's just bring you up to speed. Beijing has banned our wool following the recent foot and mouth disease outbreak in parts of South Africa. But AgriSA and the National Wool Growers Association of South Africa say the ban is unwarranted. Let's get the details then uh, from Leon De Beer, National Wool Growers Association General Manager. Leon, good morning to you. The numbers I'm seeing here, the kind of impact this could have, 35,000 workers in the industry and uh, some 4,500 seasonal sheep shearers. Uh, uh, so bring us up to speed. What can we do about this ban? Because it's all around foot and mouth disease, isn't it? It's all about foot and mouth disease, Gareth, and um, it's uh, also about many people that will lose their jobs and so on. Now, the outbreaks is specifically because it is outside of the control zones, uh, and that is the outbreaks that we saw in Northwest, Gauteng, and uh, the Free State, uh, and that resulted in the Chinese authorities to ban our wool exports. So we export more than 70 to 80 percent of our club to China every year. Uh, so the impact will be devastating. And when we had another outbreak in 2019, the industry managed to negotiate a protocol with Chinese authorities so that we can export our wool that is now safe in terms of the protocols. Uh, the protocol includes the storage of wool after it has been shown from the sheep. Uh, at a specific temperature for a specific time, which is stipulated in the terrestrial codes of the World Organization for Animal Health. So South Africa has facilities that is registered with China, uh, that is uh, looking after the protocol and complying to the protocols. So in principle, although there are outbreaks, we may still export our wool as safe, but the Chinese authorities is not accepting that at the moment. And what do we do to try and convince them? What do they need? Uh, how do we go about uh, trying to show that uh, we are doing it as safely as possible? I don't think we're denying the foot and mouth uh, outbreak, but how do we try and convince authorities yeah. that it's still safe to take our exports? Well, we firstly are in negotiation with the authorities through our national government, as well as the Department of International Relations and Cooperation. Uh, and all the technical aspects has already been communicated with them. That includes the fact that the protocols are in place. Secondly, that no outbreaks has taken place in any of the known wool producing areas and not a single small stock has been diagnosed positively with foot and mouth to this point. So that is the basis of our negotiations. Now it is about our diplomatic people to uh, you know, motivate the situation that our wool is safe, that our protocols are still in, uh, in place and that the certification of your wool is true, you know. So uh, that is all we can do is try and convince them about the situation and that it is not out of control. Uh, it's good to hear it's not out of control. What's our timelines here? I, I don't know too much about the, uh, the wool and sheep yeah. shearing industries. When we talk about 35,000 workers, 5 billion rand per annum is at risk, and those seasonal sheep shearers, what's our timeline before we start seeing jobs being lost? Well, the first auction for the new season that started now in July is the 17th of August. So we would like to see the ban being lifted before then or as soon as possible thereafter. We have the ban in place since April already, so wool that has been auctioned from April to June, that wool is still in, in store uh, and it's worth more than 734 million. So that's the impact at the moment. So the impact will be devastating if we look uh, at the ban continuing after the 17th of August. Can't we sell this wool to some other countries? Well, it's not only China. As I said, we export 70 to 80 percent to China, but we still have a market available in Europe uh, as well as Egypt and other small countries, smaller countries. Uh, so there is a possibility, but obviously 70 to 80 percent is a huge volume and mm. it cannot be absorbed really in, in the, the rest of the world. So how high up the government ladder would you like to see uh, this assistance going? Who's the top dog in your industry that you need to hear uh, from in order to make this happen? 
Well, uh, the Minister of Agriculture, Dr. Uh, uh, Ms. Tokuduziza, is, is the most important role player in this, together with the Director General, Mr. Muket Saramasodi, and then obviously also uh, Mr. Ibrahim Patel, who is with the Department of International Relations and Co Cooperation. I think they will play an important role in the negotiations. If this wool is not sent over to China when it ordinarily would in this season of, of wool shearing, can it be kept back and sold off later back to China once this issue is, is dealt with? So at least we don't lose the jobs and we don't lose the money. Can it be held in storage, for example? Yes, obviously. Uh, well, the one thing is farmers can delay the shearing season a little bit uh, in negotiation, maybe with their brokers. And secondly, wool is not a perishable product, mm. so obviously it can be stored for an extensive time. But obviously farmers also need the money. If you look at many of your farmers who went through an extensive drought very recently, they cannot afford to wait for their money too long. Otherwise, it will have the devastating effect on them as well as their farm workers. Also our sheep shearers who shear the sheep. And obviously the 40,000 communal farmers. 40,000 communal farmers export uh, by basically all their wool to China. And that is about 6 million kilograms worth 300 million rand. So that will have an extensive impact on, on their livelihoods and they will fall back into poverty if we cannot manage to resolve this issue. Yeah, it's a very serious issue that has to be resolved very quickly. Thanks for bringing it to our attention. Uh, Leon De Beer, National Wool Growers Association General Manager. So now we know where to take that story to next uh, and uh, speak to the relevant authorities, see if we can't try and find out some uh, solution to the problem as far.